Excellent job on the first module, and you are ready to move on to Module 2. But before we get to Module 2, I want to kind of go over a little bit of a math problem with you. And actually, we will be providing some math problems in between many of the chapters. This is something new that I'm adding to the course of material. I, I kind of say through many of the review videos, and you may hear me say over and over, don't worry about the math. Well, I understand that a lot of students have had some math problems, and um, I guess not only math problems, but problems with the math. So we want to make sure that you've got the math down very good. And, and when I say don't spend a lot of time studying math throughout the videos, if you hear me say that, I really want you to understand that it's very, very important that you know all of the definitions because they will interchange and use the definitions in problems. And if you do not know what specific words mean, it will make it very challenging for you to, uh, to solve the problem. So I would rather you really spend three hours going over definitions, reviewing your material, than spending three hours studying one math problem. You may see 12 to 14 math problems on the exam, but through this new update, we'll be going through a lot of math in between each module. And I want to keep these math modules short and focused. And so we're going to get right into this problem right now. And it's not really actually a problem. It's really something that's going to help you solve all of your math problems. And it's called what I like to refer to it as the T formula or a, a, the T a problem solver, we could say, but it's a T formula. And I talk about this in the Math Made Easy video. You will always have, um, there, there are three different pieces to this equation. Whenever you have a math problem, you will have two of these pieces to the mathematical equation, but you will be missing one specific piece of information. So whenever you read the problem, you just have to figure out where do I plug my two answers that they give me in the problem and what am I solving for, okay? Now let's build on the T problem a little bit further. The T problem represents, as I mentioned, three different pieces to the equation. On the top part of the equation, I want you to write the letter P. This also stands for part. In the number two slot, I want you to write the letter T. And T stands for total. And for number three, I want you to write rate or Put a percentage sign there. Okay? So when you read a math problem, they will always give you two of these variables. It's your job to find out what is the variable I'm trying to solve for. Okay? So you'll always be given two. You've got to figure out what the third one is. Now, let me just show you something that helps me out. And perhaps it may help you as well. When you look at the P or part, always think smaller, okay? The smaller number, I should put that number sign there. When you look at the T, it's the bigger number, okay? When we're looking at rates such as 6% commission or 40% of something, you know that if there's a percent sign or a rate, it's going to go right down here in the third slot. Okay? Now, one of the things that's easy for the math problems, I think, is to always convert your percentage to decimal points. And you need to always move it two places to the left. So if you were converting 6% to a a decimal format, you would move it one, two. So the decimal point would go here. So what goes right here? That would be a zero. 
So when we move that two places over, it's 0.06%. Notice with 40%, we move it two places, it's 0 0.40. So if you had a 10% commission, you would move it two places and it would be 0 0.10. So just remember we have, uh, have our three, three slots on top will always be part and think smaller number. Number two is the T for total and I want you to think the bigger number. And then rate of percent is always going to be converted to decimal point, decimal form. So you want to move that decimal place two places to the left. And if you have a six or a seven or a five, you're going to have to put a zero. But once you get to 10 and above, you will move that over and it will be 0 0.10, 0 0.40. Now there's one more piece to the formula that we have to add. And I want you to remember this. So I'm going to draw my T problem. What goes on top? Part, or think smaller number, right? What goes in this position? T, or total. And I always want you to think bigger number. Okay, I'm going to put my number signs out there for you. And what goes here? the percentage or rate. And that one's always pretty easy to solve. The, the problem I run into is what goes on top and what goes on bottom. Well, let's just do a real quick problem here. If you wanted to find out how much commission you would earn if you sold a home for a hundred thousand and it was a 10 percent commission, what would be smaller, your commission that you would earn or the sales price? Remember I said you will be given two variables. So the question was, how much commission will you earn if you sell a property for 100000 based on a 6% commission? Well, here's your 100000 right? It's the bigger number. Your, your commission is going to be smaller than the sales price. And the rate is 6%. And we know that we're supposed to move that two places over, so we have 0 0.06 is what we're going to be, uh, you know, you don't put your percent there because that will mess you up. You want to put in your calculator 0 0.06. Remember, we're, we're getting rid of the 6% um, or converting it to decimal. I probably should have put that down there. It would be a little bit better, and I'll just erase that. Because I don't want you to put 0 0.06 in your calculator and then you press the percent key because that will really throw you off. So how much commission will you earn? $6,000. Now I said there was one more piece to this formula that we were missing and here's what you need to, to insert. There are mathematical signs that go on this T for, formula or T problem. I'm going to put an X there and I'm going to put a division sign here. Remember we were solving for this number a minute ago. Whenever you have the two bottom numbers, what does your math sign tell you to do? Multiply. 100,000 times 0 .06 gives you $6,000. What if I said in this problem, what if we said a broker earned six per six thousand dollars and he or she charged a six percent commission rate? How much did the house sell for? We p plug in our numbers. Remember, in that situation, you earned $6,000, you charged a 6% commission, how much did the house sell for? So we're solving for the bigger number, right? Because your commission would be smaller, it's a part, it's, it's actually, if you looked at this from a math, from a math perspective, 
$6,000 is 6% 6 of something, right? But we know that the smaller number goes on top, which would be our commission. We want to know what the house sold for. That's the bigger number or the total. And we know the 6%. Now what does our math tell us to do? Divide. 6,000 in your calculator first. Press your divide button. And then press .06. And you should get $100,000. Let's take it a step further. Because remember, I said you will always be given two variables. You have to solve for the third. So the third way they could ask this question is simply if John Smith earned $6,000 and he sold a home that was valued for 100000 how much was the commission rate that John charged? Or what's the commission rate if John earned $6,000 and he sold a home for $100,000? See how they could word that? Well, put your smaller number on top, your bigger number on bottom, and what does our math tell us to do? Divide 6,000, and by the way, your top number always goes in your calculator first. 6,000 divided by 100,000 equals 0 .06, or when we move that two places over, we get 6%. So I just want to remind you that this T formula is very, very important for you to remember. Always draw this out. Always put your mathematical symbols. Remember that on top is part or remember the smaller number. Okay. Number two down here is your total and we're going to think or look for the bigger number. And the third slot is our percentage or rate. Now again, we'll be working math problems throughout each individual module. I'll be plugging these short little videos in and we'll be working some problems as we go through because I want you to feel very confident about the math when you complete the course. Keep up the good work. Thanks again for your business and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions.